Hey guys, it's Matthew here from Hearing Tracker, keeping you up to date with all new hearing aid technology. Today I'll be covering the Oticon More Hearing Aid and some recent updates on the range. Make sure that you subscribe if you're keen on keeping up to date with the latest news in the hearing technology world. I've been consistently fitting Oticon hearing aids for a few years now, ever since they brought out the game-changing OPN way back in 2016, which was Oticon's first Bluetooth compatible made for iPhone hearing aid. We're now two generations ahead and boy oh boy have they stepped up their game with the Oticon More hearing aid. Whilst Oticon Mores have been around since the beginning of 2021, they've recently released some updates and I wanted to make sure that you had one place to come where all of this information was together on the Oticon More I'm so excited to have had the time to not only review them based on what Oticon say they can do, but also based on the experiences that I've had with fitting patients over the last 10 months. So whilst I'll be letting you know about all of the positives associated with these hearing aids, I'll also give you a balanced view of some of the issues that I've come across too. Not only that, but at the end of this review, I'll also be confirming some recent new additions to the more range and also some information that Oticon have told me about their upcoming releases. This hearing aid supersedes the Oticon OPN-S, which was released in 2019. This was a pretty short lifespan compared to the standards of previous Oticon product releases, and in fact, other manufacturers too. The OPN-S wasn't a huge step up in terms of technology for Oticon from their previous product, the OPN, despite what Oticon have said. However, what we're seeing in terms of the change from the OPN-S to the more is huge. Visually, they don't look too dissimilar in shape and size to the OPN-S rechargeable hearing aid. They sport a rocker switch on the back, which is a soft key essentially, so it can be programmed by your audiologist to have a number of different functions, such as adjusting to different acoustic profiles, adjusting the volume control, or turning the hearing aids on or off. It also has an LED in the center to show us when it's charging if you have the rechargeable version. The race for the smallest hearing aid is long and gone and hearing aids from all manufacturers now do appear to be getting larger. This is largely down to both the rechargeable battery having the capacity to last for a full day plus squeezing that large Bluetooth chip inside. The Oticon More hearing aids are currently all receiver in the canal hearing aids. Oticon also currently have a power BTE hearing aid called the Exceed and the Exceed Play, which uses a traditional form factor with a standard ear mold. If you want to know more about this hearing aid, then drop your comments below this video and I'll make a separate video covering it if you'd like. They come in a range of colors, which similar to other hearing aid manufacturers, Oticon produce their hearing aids to match different hair colors rather than just being skin toned. Your audiologist should have a chart to help you to choose the right color for you. They're mainly matted nowadays, so they don't tend to catch the light. The most popular color that patients tend to choose in my practice is the chroma beige. The initial release of the Oticon Mores was only in a rechargeable version, which I think was a bold move from Oticon as they could have alienated those patients that still like to use batteries or their lifestyle dictates that batteries would be better for them. This does give us a good indication on the way that the hearing aid market is moving, which is a positive direction I think, being away from the wasted battery cells. The Oticon More has these two different models available, which span across each different technology level. That's the Mini Right T and the Mini Right R. The Mini Right T is the non rechargeable, disposable battery version, which was added to the Oticon More range in the summer of 2021. Both versions have a T coil or a loop system, so the main difference is the battery source. The non rechargeable version uses a standard 312 battery, which will give anything from about five to seven days of life before it needs changing. The More Hearing Aid comes in three different technology levels the More One, the More Two, and the more three, with the more one being the most advanced of the technology range. As the technology level increases, as does the clarity, the ability of the hearing aid to cope in noise, the number of features that you have access to, and finally, the degree of automation that the hearing aid has. This image shows the fitting range for the more hearing aids. So whether you have a mild, moderate, severe, or profound hearing loss, the hearing aids can be adapted to suit your degree of hearing loss by changing the power of the receiver on the end of the hearing aid. We have the option of a 60, 85, 100 or 105 dB receiver to choose from when fitting these hearing aids. And it's more often than not something that your audiologist will just do when they're actually fitting and choosing the right hearing aid for you. We can also couple the hearing aid to your ear using a variety of different tips depending on your hearing loss. These range from generic rubber open fit tips, closed domes with single vents or double vents and power domes. 
Oticon have introduced a new open base dome to be fitted to the Moor range, which visually is slightly more occlusive than the previous open domes. However, in all honesty, I haven't really found that it's had any impact with improving the low or base response on my fittings, which is exactly what it was designed for. I have found, however, that sticking with a closed, double vented dome gives patients a far better response in these scenarios. Alternatively, you can have impressions taken of your ears and custom molds fitted to the end of your hearing aids. These replace those little rubber grommets. These aren't the type of molds that would necessarily need to fill the entire bowl of your ear, but rather just sit on the end of your hearing aid. They still use the same wax guards as the Open S range, that's the Pro Wax and the Pro Wax Mini Fit, depending on whether you have a custom tip or not. There have been some issues with the quality of some of the wax guards coming from Denmark, as they don't always deposit the wax guards in place when it's necessary. If that's the case with you, then it's not an issue with the actual receiver itself, but the guards on the end of the hearing aid. Chat to your audiologist and they should be able to replace them for you. Now that's the physical side of things covered, let's talk about what these hearing aids can actually do for you. Historically, when the manufacturers of hearing aids bring out a new generation of hearing aid with a new chip, when they then supersede that hearing aid, they'll reuse the chip and change other elements on the hearing aids. And despite what their marketing says, I would say that we don't always see a huge change in terms of that leap of technology. In this instance, not only is the more a new hearing aid, but it's also a brand new chip. So I do get excited when we have a new generation of hearing aid that also has a brand new chip, as we tend to see bigger advances by way of processing capability. From a hearing aid user's perspective, that normally means that the hearing aid is able to process more information simultaneously. The new chip is the Polaris chip, which supersedes the Velux S. It has 16 times more capacity to execute advanced algorithms and twice as much computational power and speed. As a result, we've seen improvements in these key features. First of all, Bluetooth connectivity. If you're thinking, why do I even need Bluetooth in my hearing aids? It's a great question. And I've made a video covering this exact subject, which I'll link in the description to this video. In summary, it means that you can stream phone calls, music, and the radio or podcasts directly to your ears. There's even an app that allows you to manually make adjustments to the settings on your hearing aids if you want to override the automatic settings. One drawback with previous Oticon hearing aids was their inability to stream with Android phones. So whilst the user was able to connect to an Android device and use the Oticon on app to adjust the hearing aids, they weren't able to stream media or phone calls as you can with an iPhone. This on occasion did mean that I would have potentially swayed away from an Oticon hearing aid as my recommendation, depending on the type of cell phone that someone had. However, now with a new Oticon More range, this is possible and there are no limitations from a streaming point of view, depending on whether the hearing aid user owns an Android or an iPhone. As long as it's using Android version 10 and it has Bluetooth Bluetooth version 5 built into it. The downside of the Oticon more Bluetooth versus the likes of Phonak or Unitron is that it doesn't use classic Bluetooth. So it will only connect with a smartphone or iPad rather than being able to connect to any Bluetooth device. Plus there's one other useful Bluetooth feature that both Phonak and Unitron have that Oticon don't on their more range, which is the ability to pick up the hearing aid user's voice when they're on a phone call using the microphones actually on the hearing aid itself. This means that on other hearing aids, they can be used as a truly hands-free setup and the phone can be kept in the pocket whilst you're using the telephone. Whilst this does sound great in theory, I actually prefer the Oticon setup as the microphones on a hearing aid aren't really designed for this purpose. They're more designed to work as hearing aid microphones to pick up sound from all around you. So I have actually had complaints about the inefficiencies of that setup rather than this one. The deep neural network is powered by this huge increase in processing power from the Polaris chip, and the DNN is designed to deliver more meaningful sounds to the user. Oticon claimed to be the first manufacturer to use sounds recorded from real life to train the deep neural network, and have used 12 million real life sound scenes so that it can learn the way that the brain does when it comes to hearing. As a result, Oticon boasts that their universal setting is the most accurate in terms of being able to identify the type of listening situation that a hearing aid user is in, and then make a precise decision on how they should react in those listening environments, delivering the sound that the hearing aid user wishes to hear. Their research has shown that this results in a 15% greater speech understanding from their previous Open S hearing aids. 
The more sound intelligence feature is an automatic feature built into the hearing aid, which makes it easier for patients to follow and engage in conversations in more complicated listening situations, such as groups, crowds, and noisy listening environments. It comprehensively scans the sound scene 500 times per second, and then organizes and delivers the appropriate sound based on the training from the deep neural network to try and highlight the sounds that will be of interest and create a contrast with the sounds that the hearing aid user is less likely to want to hear. The more sound amplifier works in tandem with the more sound intelligence and helps to provide a dynamic and balanced amplification system, reacting to the nature of the sound scene and then adapting its resolution and speed to ensure the best amplification of the sounds that you want to hear. Oticon have left behind the fixed compression features of old and now tried to maintain a full audible sound scene while sustaining the contrast and balance between sounds. All in all, this results in a far more natural listening experience, hearing the finer details of speech and not being overwhelmed by the louder sounds in the environment. Oticon's Tinnitus Sound Support is a sound generator that can be integrated into Oticon hearing aids. Especially designed programs in the hearing aids allow you to play various sounds that can help you move your attention away from your tinnitus. Together with your audiologist, you can choose from a wide range of tinnitus relief sound options and decide which sounds to include in your hearing aids. You can choose from soothing ocean-like sounds to white noise. It's possible to adjust the volume level of relief sounds directly on the button on the back of the hearing aid or via the Oticon on app, which we'll come to next. Each manufacturer has its own app for their Bluetooth compatible hearing aids, which is worth a video in itself just covering the app's functions. But to give you an overview, the Oticon On app is available on iOS and Android devices and allows the hearing aid user to make adjustments to the settings on their hearing aids. Some users like to have the flexibility to manually override the settings on the hearing aids, others never really use them at all. If this isn't for you, then don't worry, the hearing aid functions just the same even if you don't have a smartphone. So I look at the app as more of a bonus feature. The app also has a Find My Hearing Aids feature, which if one of your hearing aids falls out, it will show you on a map the last time that your phone and the hearing aids were together. And I have had patients find their lost hearing aids as a result of utilizing this feature. It tells you your battery life, which is definitely more accurate with the rechargeable version than with the battery version. It allows you to monitor your hearing aid uses. And finally, it has a great feature called IFTTT. This stands for If This Then That, which is a clever setup, which allows the Oticon hearing aids to interact with other pieces of technology. An example that I like to use in clinic is that you can have other pieces of tech such as internet enabled doorbells or fire alarms interacting with your hearing aids to advise you when they've been activated. This is often an overlooked feature that Otogon have built into their app, which I think is tremendously powerful in terms of enhancing the quality of life of those with hearing loss. I'll post a link in the description to this video for a list of the IFTTT recipes that you can utilize with any MFI Otogon hearing aid. What the app lacks, which we now do see with the majority of other hearing aid manufacturers, is the ability for the hearing aid user to adjust the hearing aids with a little bit more finer detail, such as you allowing to adjust the bass and the treble yourself, and to save your own custom-made programs. I do think that this will come at some point from Oticon, as they wouldn't want to be left behind the other manufacturers. One great feature that I've really taken advantage of over the last 18 months is remote care, which is done via the Oticon remote care app. This is a separate app to the Oticon on app. This allows me to make adjustments to the settings on a hearing aid from the clinic while the patient is sat at home. I personally don't like to make remote changes too early on in the fitting process as nothing beats having the patient sat in front of me to get those initial adjustments right. Plus it's more likely early on that we might need to look at making some physical changes, whether that's the wire length or the dome on the end of the hearing aid, and I can't do that remotely. There are a few features that it's not possible to adjust remotely. However, for the most part, it's great to have this backup if the patient can't make it to the clinic. The only thing that I'm not keen on with remote adjustments is that the first thing that I would normally do if a patient walks into the clinic with any issues is examine the ear. And I don't have that ability if I'm remotely making changes. So I couldn't rule out any ear related issues that may be causing the need for any adjustments. Oticon have been great at recognizing where hearing aid technology alone will struggle to overcome hearing challenges, and as a result, they have a great range of accessories, such as the Connect Clip and Edger Mic, which are remote microphones, great for hands-free phone calls or lectures, their TV Adapter 3.0, which allows for streaming of the television directly to both hearing aids, their Remote Control 3.0, which is useful should you not have a smartphone but still wish to make adjustments to the settings on your hearing aids without necessarily having to press the buttons on the back of them, and then finally, they have the 
phone adapter 2.0, which allows you to stream your landline to your hearing aids. I've made a separate video on Oticon's accessories and I'll link that in the description to this video. Oticon More's rechargeable version is available across all technology levels, which is using the industry standard lithium iron technology. This means that for a three hour charge, one should get a full 24 hours of battery life. There is clever circuitry in place, meaning that the hearing aids can be left on charge overnight and it shouldn't do any damage to the batteries. You don't even need to turn the hearing aids on or off. That's automatically done when they go into the charger. The battery life is reduced with more streaming. However, with constant streaming throughout the day, the batteries will still last for a full waking day. I haven't had anybody come back to me yet with these hearing aids complaining that the batteries aren't lasting a full day. The great thing is, if you also forget to charge them one night, you can put them in the charger for 30 minutes whilst getting ready in the morning and you'll still get six hours of life out of them from a 30 minute blast in the charger. So what are the new additions to the Oticon More range? First of all, the More Cross. At the same time that Oticon released their non-rechargeable More hearing aid in September, Oticon also released their new Cross system, which is compatible with the More range for those with single-sided deafness. This has been a bit of an issue over the last 10 months, as I've had to recommend the Oticon OPN S range for any new patients with single-sided deafness, and I would have loved to have been able to fit them with the latest hearing aid technology. However, I'm super excited now to have this in my Oticon portfolio again. Whether you're someone that's into their music or not, we all come across music on a daily basis. Hearing aids are specifically designed to work with speech and enhance speech, whatever the environment. The downside of this is that when they pick up a sound that doesn't have a speech-like pattern, they assume that it's background noise and they manipulate the sound accordingly, which can actually have a hugely negative impact on music. Oticon have worked on a new music program called More Music, which optimizes the compression scheme and balances the frequencies and notes. This really helps to capture the complex dynamics of music without it sounding too sharp or too tinny. With all programs designed by the manufacturers, they're a great starting point, but never perfect. And I've been using the More Music program for a couple of months now, and it's definitely helped me to reach a more satisfactory level with musicians more quickly. If you're already wearing Moors, you'll need to perform a firmware update on the hearing aid in the practice with your audiologist in order to access this feature. The final new addition to the Oticon Moor range is their first travel friendly smart charger. This portable charger holds three full charges, so it's ideal if you want to go away camping for the weekend and don't have access to a mains charger. It works in the same way as a normal charger and a three hour charge will give a full day's worth of power with a 30 minute charge giving you six hours of life. Not only that, but it's also designed to draw out any moisture that may have built up in the hearing aids during the course of the day. So it should also assist with maintaining the longevity of your hearing aids. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. If you like this video, please hit like. If you have any questions, make sure that you drop them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. I'll see you in the next video.